Learning how to program has a number of benefits beyond just being able to write programs. Uh, it helps you to clarify your logic when thinking about many different things. And a big part of programming is just the problem solving aspect. And so people who know how to program typically have a certain level of skill at solving problems. And a lot of this comes from the fact that they learn how to do problem decomposition. So I mentioned earlier that when you're going to solve a problem, if you have a hard problem, try not to solve the hard problem. Try to convert the hard problem into smaller, easier problems, and then build your solution out of those. And this process is what we typically refer to as problem decomposition. So to help illustrate this, I'd like to, to take a particular problem, something that, that most people are familiar with, and talk about how we could break it down. And that problem is going to be making a sandwich, in particular a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, you know, at least if you're so talking to a human, you might start off with the make me a sandwich, or just make a sandwich. Okay. And perhaps that would be a sufficient level of detail for, for a human to to follow or make a P B and J sandwich if we want to to give those additional specifics. But of course there's a lot of complexity in this. There's lots of things that that go on. And so I'd like to break this problem of making a sandwich into smaller pieces. So in fact what we'll do is we'll write an outline here. We can take this and we can break it into a number of smaller steps and we can break each of those into a number of steps. So if I want to make a sandwich, what do I have to do? Well, there are different ways to, to break this down, but I think one of the first things I'd have to do is the get ingredients. And then once I had all the ingredients, I could assemble the ingredients. And then I, you know, should clean up what I've done. Okay, so we've taken a hard problem here and we've broken it into three smaller problems. But of course, each one of these does have a certain level of complexity to it. And so I can take each one of those and break it up further. Okay. When we get the ingredients, well, it turns out that if we're making peanut butter and jelly, there are a few different ingredients that, that we would use. We need peanut butter, uh, we need jelly, we probably need bread to put it on, and then we might need other things like there are utensils, a plate, stuff like that. I could do these things in somewhat of a logical way. I could just list each one out, but for example, at least in many houses, the peanut butter and the bread don't need to be refrigerated. They're probably in similar locations. So maybe we could have a get pantry items. And if I want to get the pantry items, the first thing I have to do is walk to the pantry. And then once I'm at the pantry, I would grab peanut butter and bread. Okay. And then I might get the fridge items. And so similarly, I would walk to the fridge and I would grab the jelly or whatever other items and then get other items from wherever they might be in the kitchen. We could break each of these down further. And of course, these things could be broken down further as well. There's, there's a lot of complexity that goes into walking. Uh, you have to know what this thing, what this pantry is, where it is, the act of grabbing and manipulating stuff. When people are actually programming robotics, they have to deal with all of the, the minutia involved in this. And so we could continue breaking this down further and further. One of the things, since we're talking about functions though, that I would note is that a lot of these things probably would make good functions. So 
each of these is going to have a walk to something. So we could make the thing you're walking towards be a formal parameter. And so we could call it with the argument of pantry, we could call it with the argument of refrigerator, we could call it with the argument of cupboard. Okay. Uh, we could have a general grab function, and then we could call grab with peanut butter, we could call grab with bread, we could call bre uh, grab with jelly, etc. And so we'd make try to make reusable functions that had the formal parameters that would allow us to to call them over and over again and make more use of them. What about assembling the ingredients? Well, uh, first thing I'd do is I'd probably uh, get out bread, bread, put bread on plate, and then I need to spread the peanut butter out, which is going, I could break that down. because in order to do that, first I have to open the peanut butter, I have to get peanut butter on knife, and and this is actually something here where I will need to do it over and over again. I have to repeat until the bread is covered. Uh, we would get peanut butter on knife, spread peanut butter on bread. Okay, I won't go through and make an entire long breakdown of this, but hopefully this gives you the idea. That, so many of these things could be broken into separate functions. Once again, if we were intelligent about how we made our functions and what we used as formal parameters, we could reuse a lot of the functions that we have. Now the approach that I've taken here is what's called a top-down uh, design or a decomposition. So I started with my whole problem and then I break it into large pieces and then I break each of those into smaller pieces and I break each of those into smaller pieces until I get down to something that is at the level where I could code it, okay, where I could actually either uh, implement the function or call some library function or, or something like that. Top down is how you will wind up approaching lots of problems and probably the majority of problems. Every so often you might try solving problems bottom up or at least part of a problem bottom up. Uh, for example, you might say, hey, you know what? I know that making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is going to involve spreading things like peanut butter and jelly on the bread. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write a function that does the spreading. Okay, and so this would be something that's low down, it's it's a small piece that's towards the bottom that we know is going to, to play a role. And then you write a lot of the little pieces, and then you start assembling those pieces to make your larger solution. That would be a bottom-up approach to the problem solving. Whether you use top-down or bottom-up is you know completely up to you. And in fact, in a very large problem, you do a little bit of both because sometimes you have the ability to see what you're going to need and then you do more of the bottom up uh, but a lot of times you're just the top down helps you to understand the problem and make it more manageable so this whole idea of problem composition is something that you should be thinking of every time you go to write a program think how can I decompose this problem and how can I decompose it into pieces that are going to be more usable and that I can can take possibly across multiple problems or at least get the most use out of in this particular program that I'm writing.